connective tissue. Connective tissue does what its name implies. It connects other things together, and it also just provides general support for other tissues. So going back to our skin example, right underneath um, the epithelial tissue, right under the skin, there is a layer, it's kind of a padding layer of connective tissue. And um, there are a number of different types of connective tissue. They're shown in the figure here, in the picture here. What they all have in common is that the cells are scattered throughout some type of a matrix. So instead of the cells being packed tightly together and connected directly, instead they sort of live in this, this mesh network. Let's look at some of these pictures. So cartilage, cartilage is a good example. You can see each of these dark dots are nuclei of cells. So we can make out the individual cells here, but we can also see like right here at the tip of my of my arrow, um, right in this space, this purple, this is just extracellular matrix. It's some space in between cells and it's filled with things like collagen fibers, um, things that the cells secrete into their surroundings. Uh, blood. Blood is another interesting example of connective tissue, actually. It's fluid. It's the only connective tissue that is fluid, um, but it still follows that same criteria. We have individual cells and they are separated by some type of a matrix. The matrix is fluid. The matrix is mostly water in this case. Um, adipose tissue. This is, this is fat. This is the name for fat tissue. And same thing. These cells are um, specialized to, to store lipids. So in total, there are six major types, and yeah, that's connective tissue. Let's move right along here. So muscle tissue, this is the one that's a little bit more familiar. Muscle tissue can contract when it's stimulated by a nerve, and our nervous system um, is something that we will spend a little bit of time on in a later chapter. But for right now, just know that muscle tissue, it can shorten um, when it is activated. And the, the individual cells that make up muscles, uh, the cells are very elongated, they're very long. And so when they contract, it's kind of like taking a fiber and just shortening it. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see a little bit of that as we go forward. There are a few different types of muscle tissue. The muscle tissue that we have voluntary control over that allows us to move our bodies, that's called skeletal muscle. These are muscles that attach to our skeleton and consequently they allow us to move our skeletons. There's a connection um, via tendons. Um, connective tissue provides the bridge between muscle and bone. Uh, another type of muscle tissue is what exists in the heart. This is a muscle that we do not have voluntary control over, but still the overall principles are the same. These are muscle cells that can contract, they can shorten, and they do it automatically. This is called smooth muscle, or I'm sorry, this is called the cardiac muscle. The third type of muscle tissue that we have in our bodies is smooth muscle, and this one is also involuntary. We do not have conscious control over it. This is the type of muscle that lines um, a lot of organs like our stomach, for example. Stomach, um, the way that it, it churns and it, it squishes food around, um, that's being accomplished by the action of smooth muscle that, that sort of lines the stomach, <clears throat> wraps around it in, in the wall, and when it contracts, it squeezes the contents of the stomach. Smooth muscle also lines a lot of other things. So the intestines, um, when the smooth muscle contracts, it helps to squeeze the food along, keep it moving along through the intestines. And then blood vessels. We've mentioned blood vessels are lined with epithelial tissue. Right around that epithelial tissue, there's another wrapping of muscle tissue, smooth muscle. And this is important because it allows us to control, um, it allows our our nervous system to control where blood is flowing to. So for example, if you are, if you're warm, if it's a hot day and if you're, you know, if you're warm, um, what your body will do is send more of the blood in your body close to the surface. So close to your skin. What does that do? That allows the heat to escape. The heat can radiate outwards and escape into, into the surroundings. So it helps to cool you down. Um, on the other extreme, if you are cold, if your body is cold, what's your body going to do? It's going to bring the blood closer into to the middle, so away from the surfaces, and that's to conserve heat. 
The way that blood is moved is by changing the diameter of, of these blood vessels. So if the blood vessels near the surface of the skin, if they contract, that will force the blood towards, towards the middle of the body more and away from the skin. So being able to control blood vessels, <clears throat> excuse me, again, this is something that we don't have conscious control of. It's something that automatically our bodies take care of and it's through the action of smooth muscle. Our last type of tissue, our fourth type of tissue is nervous tissue. <clears throat> nervous tissue is tissue that allows us to send information. It's specialized for sending signals. And it's the neurons that take a signal to muscle cells, tell muscle cells to when to contract. Um, the individual cells that make up nervous tissue, they're really kind of unusual. They're called neurons. There's that word. Neurons are the individual cells that make up nervous tissue. And they look something like this. This is one cell being shown in this picture. Right here is the cell body, and it has all of these different extensions uh, out from it. There's one really long extension. This is the main um, branch for sending signals out, and then all of these are for receiving signals. Um, so they, these are really specialized cells. The way that they send a signal is by um, it's an electrical signal, so it's actually just the movement of charge and ions, um, sodium and potassium ions particularly, are what are involved in that signal transmission. And it's, it's really amazing how these cells work. They can send signals very quickly. Um, for example, to send a signal to your foot to contract, um, maybe you need to move your foot or something, that signal has to be carried by one cell from your spinal cord all the way down your leg to your foot. That's one single cell. It has an extension that goes that whole way. And think about how quickly you can move your foot if you decide to, right? It takes almost no time at all for that signal to get all the way down to your foot and have it move. So really efficient signal transmission here. Nervous tissue includes things like the brain and the spinal cord, which goes down your backbone. And then we also have a lots, lots of um, nerves that branch off from that and they go and innervate different parts of the body. So that's nervous tissue.